superpowers are some of the coolest parts of Battle Shonen. But as a series gets expansive and runs for years, or maybe decades, it can become a bit tough to remember who can do what and why. That is why I exist. This is the My Hero Academia Power Guide, where I have but one mission. For you to walk away with not just an understanding of the series' power system as a whole, but also of every single ability in My Hero. This video would ideally serve as a comprehensive yet accessible resource. This is gonna be a fat one, so let's just get into it. A few rules first. Full spoilers, obviously. Only quirks from the main series will be covered because I'm not trying to die of old age. I will also not cover unnamed quirks unless the character is objectively fairly important. And of course, this will be a very long video, so please use the timestamps that I will provide for you. If you want to watch it all in one sitting, go ahead, but otherwise, use them. Before we talk specifics, let's get our basics right. In My Hero Academia, the nondescript future of Earth brought about quirks, or superpowers. How did they appear? Who knows, the series certainly doesn't. While there are theories within the series' story on how it might have started with genetic influence from a rat-carrying virus, there is no conclusion on that mystery as of right now. The facts, however, are that in this future, 80% of people are born with some kind of special ability, originally called meta-ability before being renamed Quirk for the sake of political correctness. Yes, that is an actual plot point. A Quirk will appear in a child within the first four years of its life. These abilities will often seem almost magical, but they are nonetheless rooted in biology. A quirk is defined by two aspects, the gene that codifies the quirk and the body part that allows for its activation and expression. These two together are called the quirk factor. Important to note here is that these two elements can be separately affected. Let's say your quirk activates only on your hands. If you now lose your hands in a freak accident, your body obviously still has the quirk gene, since genes are stored in every single cell, but your ability is unable to be activated, leaving you functionally quirkless. The appearance of quirk genes seems to be linked with another biological adaptation, namely the loss of one of the joints in the pinky toe. The logic here seems to be that those who have lost that joint are further along in human evolution. Another genetic aspect of quirks is that they are subject to mutation and selection. As people with quirks mate and reproduce, their quirk genes mix and fuse as well, just like every other regular gene. This leads to a phenomenon where quirks become increasingly more powerful and complex as the generations go on, since they become continuously more cocktail, so to speak. This has given rise to a doomsday theory called the quirk singularity, a cataclysm wherein a new generation of quirk users will be born with quirks so absurdly powerful that neither their minds nor bodies can handle it, leading to chaos and pandemonium. Not many people within the series believe in it, but curiously, immensely powerful quirks with no direct inheritance have been observed to pop up in some red-eyed children. Okay, enough biology, let's get to some categories since I know y'all love that. Quirks can broadly be put into three boxes. Emitter or operative types are quirks that either produce or influence an external object, element, or force. This is where shooting fire, telekinesis, and lasers fall into, but also brainwashing and other abilities which influence others. This is by far the most common type of quirk. Transformation or composite types are quirks which can cause the user to undergo a temporary physical change, such as growing your hands or separating your bodies into pieces. In these cases, the use of the quirk is generally dependent on that transformation. Mutant or heteromorph types are quirks which transform the user's body permanently upon first time activation, often even already being visible at birth. This includes all additional limbs, odd body shapes, or other alterations to the human form. These quirks are thus by definition always active and grant additional sub-abilities related to that physical change. There is a rather rare subtype which can intersect with any of the regular types. 
This is called the accumulation type, in which the quirk requires the gradual buildup and stockpile of a certain resource. For example, a quirk which can rapidly transform the body fat into explosive energy first necessitates a large quantity of fat to be stored on the user over time. One last detour before we get to the actual list. Quirks are, in every way imaginable, physical traits, very similar to muscles. Thus, they can be exercised the same way, by being repeatedly pushed to their limits, allowed to rest, and then pushed again. And just like muscles, they don't come with a manual, which can lead to its own user misunderstanding their own ability for decades before actually figuring out how it really works. And lastly, the body and the mind are interlinked and so, psychosomatic factors can affect one's quirk the same way it can affect your stomach. For example, a traumatic event can cause the quirk to evolve into a new form, a rare phenomenon called a quirk awakening. Or, that trauma can do the opposite, locking away the quirk's true power until that mental blockade is overcome and a reawakening is triggered. Alright, that should cover the very basics, we will add to this as we go. And to go we must, because oh my god, there are so many! For starters, we have Acid, a simple emitter type quirk held by Mina Ashido. It allows her to produce a corrosive acid sludge from any part of her skin. This quirk is a great example of how categorizing quirks can be a little tricky, because while she clearly emits something, she also undergoes a permanent physical mutation because of it. Since her acid comes from her skin, the quirk also codifies her skin to be resistant to corrosion, giving it its striking pink coloration. Thus, what seems like a mutation is actually her body's response to the emission of her quirk. Mina has full control over the amount, the consistency and the actual corrosiveness of her acid, being able to produce both slightly stinging liquid and pudding which melts through metal. Its main weakness is that the pink skin's resistance to acid is not perfect and can become strained over time, but this can be improved with training. Mina has learned how to use this quirk in various ways, from acidic waves to veils to beams to melting surfaces for mobility to her ultimate move. Acid Man, wherein she coats her entire body in a viscous, humanoid suit of acid that acts as both offense and defense. Anivoice is an emitter type quirk employed by 1A's rock boy Koda. It allows him to speak to all animals and give them simple commands, humans excluded. And no, his rock shaped body is seemingly not related to his quirk at all. His family just kinda looks like that. Anivoice is fairly versatile as it can take advantage of any animal in the area and their unique abilities. However, because it is sound based, the animals have to be able to actually hear Koda's voice for it to activate. So a loud noise can disrupt the control. Star student Momoya Yorozu wields the powerful creation quirk, an emitter type which allows her to, well, create any non living object at will from her body. This works by using up the fat cells in her body, splitting them up into singular molecules and then rearranging them into any combination she desires. The condition for the successful creation is that Momo has to A, have enough fat stored in her body, and B, be able to imagine and somewhat understand the properties and production of the object in question. That is why she is so studious and why her costume includes a book, as she needs to have as much info on a variety of objects as possible. The creations then pop out through her skin, where she can either detach them and use them normally or even leave them attached to her body for easier transport. Tokoyami is another example of how quirk categories can be a little confusing. You look at a birdman with a demon coming out of his belly and think, well, that's a mutant. But no, his quirk, Dark Shadow, is considered an emitter type, and the bird head has nothing to do with the actual ability. He just do be looking like that for real. The quirk is the creature that emerges from Tokoyami's tummy, a malleable, vaguely bird-shaped mass of dark energy which can levitate, stretch, and otherwise normally interact with the physical world. This Dark Shadow is however not just an ability, it is a sentient being with thoughts and feelings. This is the major crux of the quirk. 
When exposed to light, Dark Shadow weakens and becomes timid and passive. This makes for less destructive power, but also allows Tokiyami to retain complete control as it's fairly passive and timid. In the darkness, however, Dark Shadow's power increases manifold, but so does its rage and chaos, making it easy for Tokoyami's will to be overpowered. However, with enough training, Tokoyami has made Dark Shadow a formidable ability and created numerous super moves. With Black Abyss, Tokoyami grafts Dark Shadow onto himself like a set of armor, enhancing his range, durability, and offense. Fallen Angel, meanwhile, exploits Dark Shadow's innate levitation to allow Tokoyami to fly, as he has the creature hug him and lift him up while having it also hide under his cape to increase its strength. Besides these two notable ones, Tokoyami has shown a variety of applications, from whips to prisons, but his ultimate move was only unlocked once he gained full control over Dark Shadow at even its most volatile. Encased in darkness, Tokoyami can use Ragnarok, where he launches a fully manifested Dark Shadow forward to cause massive destruction. Unmistakably a mutant type, Dupli Arms is the quirk possessed by Mezo Shoji. While the most striking feature of this quirk are the multiple tentacles and membranes connected to the user's body, it goes beyond that. This power allows him to grow numerous additional appendages at will, with each one being able to grow duplicates of any of his body parts. So, if he needs an extra eye or an ear, he can just grow one, making him excellent at reconnaissance. And if he needs an extra punch to pack, he can grow himself a fisting tree. This comes at very little risk to him, as all duplicate appendages are non-essential and can be regrown with no sweat. It does obviously hurt losing them though. As an example of a more subtle mutant type quirk, we have Kyokajiro's earphone jack. This quirk mutates the user's earlobes into long headphone cables, with a standard jack plug at the end of them. These earlobes can transmit sound the same way a cable would, so for starters, this quirk allows Jiro to plug her ears directly into her phone. Ew. But earphone jack can do far more than that. The earlobes are both prehensile and elongatable, which gives Jiro both range and dexterity. The jacks at the end of them can also function as detection devices, since they pick up sound through surfaces and transmit it to the ear. So by plugging the jack into the ground or the wall, Jiro can perform highly efficient reconnaissance. The maximum range of her extended lobes is 6 meters, and her total maximum range of detailed hearing is 12 meters. But in addition to transmitting sound from the environment into the body, this quirk can also do the opposite. The user can choose to channel the sound of their own heartbeat into the lobes, which will then transform those sound waves into highly destructive impacts. Usually, this can only be done internally on objects the jack is plugged into, but Jiro has since developed specialized equipment which allows her to send that heartbeat out as a destructive airwave. She can either plug herself into her leg armor, which works as a one powerful monodirectional amplifier, or she can use the two smaller amps on her arms for some complex maneuvers. A very classic emitter type, electrification allows Denki Kaminari to freely produce electricity. However, this comes with a few caveats. The electricity he produces follows semi-realistic physics, so once he discharges it, it will fan out in every direction indiscriminately. Denki himself has no natural way of directing the thunder, and can thus pose a threat to his allies by accident. Additionally, he is only somewhat resistant to his own power, and his brain has a hard limit on how much electricity it can withstand. Once that is reached, he short circuits, his quirk turns itself off and he turns into an idiot with almost no brain function. This takes about an hour to wear off. While his brain's limit seems insurmountable, Denki has somewhat overcome the omnidirectional danger of his quirk, as he worked together with the support engineers to develop the sharpshooter gear. This gadget throws out discs which will stick to anything and then singularly attract Denki's lightning, allowing him to focus on a single target with enough preparation. What you see is what you get with this mutant type quirk, which causes engines and exhaust pipes to grow out of the user's body. Where exactly they will grow differs from user to user, 
Tensei Ida has them in his arms, while Tenya Ida has them in his quads. These mechanical monstrosities do exactly what you'd think. They accelerate the user by shooting out combustive blasts, just like a car. Funnily enough, however, these engines don't run on gasoline, but on fruit juice. Speed's the name of the game with this quirk, and so most of its applications center around optimizing its acceleration. By cooling the engines, more power can be used without overheating and stalling, for example. And if that's not enough, the quirk comes with a gnarly upgrade path. As the engines are, despite appearances, biological, they will adapt to strain just like muscles growing after being torn. So a very effective way to improve this quirk is to repeatedly rip out the mufflers out of your body, letting new ones grow, then straining those new ones and ripping them out as well. While it increases your power very quickly, it is also quite painful. Explosion is one of those very self-explanatory quirks. This emitter type allows the user to release explosions of varying sizes from the palm of their hands. The way it works is that the user, Katsuki Bakugo, can secrete a special secondary type of sweat, different from the salt water we all produce. This special sweat has the properties of nitroglycerin, and can only be secreted from his hands. Once he has a good amount of it, he can detonate it at will. He can also choose to store that sweat externally, in grenades or other explosion-adjacent gadgets. While Bakugo can decide when and how much to secrete this explosive sweat, it is still dependent on the usual factors that determine sweating. So it's easier for him to produce it if it's hot or if he's exerting himself, and conversely, cold conditions slow the production down considerably. Another self-explanatory one. Frog is a mutant type quirk that caused the user to acquire the autonomy and abilities of a frog. As seen in Tsuyu Asui and her family, this quirk affects every user to a different degree, with some being mildly frog shaped while others are just straight up a human sized frog. This quirk's goodies include a prehensile tongue that can stretch out to 20 meters, very useful as both a grappling hook and a whip. The muscle anatomy also changes to accommodate frog-like movement, with strong jumps and the ability to cling to surfaces. The quirk also includes some more specific adaptations, like being able to produce a pungent but weak poison, being able to camouflage and being able to expel one's stomach to clean it. The only real weakness of this quirk is that frog anatomy comes with exothermy, meaning that the user is somewhat cold-blooded and relies on external heat for much of the body's chemical processes. This means that prolonged exposure to the cold will cause the body to shut down and enter brumation, the amphibian and reptilian equivalent of hibernation. Half Cold Half Hot is, besides being maybe the dumbest named quirk in the main series, an extremely powerful and versatile emitter type quirk. This quirk was specifically created when Endeavor's Hellflame mixed with Ray's Ice Quirk, inheriting both abilities. Thus, Shoto Todoroki is able to produce and control both fire and ice. The real genius of this ability is that it automatically eliminates its own weaknesses. Producing either fire or ice causes the body temperature to reach unsafe values, but by being able to do both, it's easy to self-regulate that temperature continuously. Armed with this non-weakness, Todoroki is a force to be reckoned with, being able to dispense scorching flames and piercing icicles at will, with very little danger to himself. The only real limitation is that he cannot manipulate external sources of these two elements, only those which he creates himself. These two abilities, fire and ice, were initially believed to be localized within specific sections of his body. The left side can only produce fire, and the right can only produce ice. However, both Shoto's internal dialogue and some of his actions in the recent manga have implied that this separation is actually psychological and not physical, meaning that he could overcome it with enough training. The results of that training have, however, not been shown as of writing this video. Our first transformation type is also one of the simplest quirks in the entire series. Kirishima's hardening, which allows him to harden his body. That's kind of it. 
The degree to which he can harden is variable and he can force himself to be entirely rock hard, which allows for both excellent offense and defense. Sucks at long range though, and it does have a limit to how much punishment he can take before his skin starts cracking. Invisibility forcefully turns the user permanently invisible, being unable to be turned off as it is a mutant type. The way it specifically functions is that it causes the user's skin to refract light in such a way that they turn transparent. While Toto Hagakure has learned how to manipulate the refraction to cause blinding flares or even redirect lasers, the invisibility remains permanent. Our favorite Frenchman boasts an equally flashy power, the emitter quirk Naval Laser. Again, it's in the name. This quirk allows the user to shoot off a powerful laser beam from their navel. With the right alterations to one's costume, that laser can also be redirected to be fired from other parts of a suit, for, for example. Said laser can have its size, power, and luminosity altered for any purpose, and its recoil can be increased to a point where it allows for propulsion. However, in Aoyama's case, it comes at a hefty price. Because this power wasn't originally his, his body isn't adapted to it, leading to the laser leaking out and also messing with his stomach quite a bit. In order to keep it in check, he has to permanently wear a special belt. Baby Boy Mineta boasts Pop-Off, a mutant type quirk that causes sticky orbs to grow on his head instead of hair. These balls can be plucked from his head with ease and then thrown around. They will stick to anything except Mineta himself, making them great for both traps and bouncy maneuvers on the part of the user. The only downside is their stickiness is linked to Mineta's physical well-being, and if he overuses them, his head will bleed, making his physical well-being less good. Therefore, the more he uses this quirk, the weaker it gets until he has time to recover. This sweet emitter power allows the user to increase their strength five-fold for three minutes for every 10 grams of sugar they eat. Sugar Rush is thus a fairly basic power-up with a bit of a special activation. Without the sugar, the quirk won't activate, and while the quirk is active, the user, Sato, suffers from hypoglycemia, which reduces the brain's functions. Also, yes, it is considered an emitter type according to the data books, despite definitely causing a transformation, do not ask me why, because I do not know. Hunter Cero's mutant type quirk is tape, and guess what? This one also is fairly straightforward. The user's mutated elbows look and function like tape dispensers, from where he can fire lengths of tape that stick to anything he aims at. That tape is said to not be unlimited, but he never seems to run out, so hey. Eh. The tape he shoots is very strong and can be used to immobilize targets, maneuver around, or secure areas. He can also choose to either cut it off or leave it attached to his gross elbows. The only downside is that overusing this quirk gives him dry skin. He, he has a tail. It is prehensile and muscular, he, he, he just has a tail. Main series heroine Uraraka fumbles her way through the story using her emitter type quirk, Zero Gravity. By touching anything with 5 of her 10 pads on her hands, she can remove the Earth's gravitational pull from that object. She can then clasp her hands together, making all 10 pads touch, to undo the effect. While it is a simple power, it can be quite useful in apprehending targets and causing destruction. After some training, she has also become very proficient at making herself float, allowing for immense mobility. The only downside is that the human body isn't great at coping with zero gravity, so she will often experience intense nausea when using the quirk. Ah, here we go. The most important quirk in the series, one for all. An emitter accumulation type that has been used by nine people so far, including our main character Deku. This quirk contains two crucial components, a power stockpile ability and a transference ability. The power stockpile allows for a gradual accumulation of physical strength, which, when fully charged, can be unleashed for devastating blows. 
The transference ability, meanwhile, allows the user to pass on one for all to someone by having them ingest their DNA while intending to pass it on. What's important here is that this transference power will transfer all quirks within the giver, meaning that if that person had a quirk before receiving one for all, that quirk will also be transferred and become a permanent part of one for all. Because of this, there are numerous quirks that are stored within one for all, which the current user, Deku, has gained access to by fully acclimating to the power. Power Stockpile and Transference are the two original powers that initially belonged to Yoichi Shigaraki, the younger brother of All for One. The latter he was born with, and the former was given to him by his brother, who didn't know about Transference. Deku has since mastered the use of the Power Stockpile, being able to circulate the energy across his body to reduce strain, and then explosively increasing it just in the moment of impact. He has also weaponized the resulting air pressure for distance attacks. Fajin is the quirk that belonged to the third user of One for All, and it allows the user to store up kinetic energy. By repeating regular movements like walking or stretching, the user can generate explosive energy to be released at will. Combining this with One for All stockpile can yield extremely powerful results. Danger Sense was the quirk of Hikage Shinomori, the fourth user, and is basically a spidey sense. This quirk allows the user to sense incoming danger moments before it happens, thus allowing them to react quickly. However, this sense only reacts to outright malice, so cannot detect more complex dangers. Additionally, if an attack is too fast to react to no matter what, this sense will not help you. Black Whip is the power that belonged to the fifth user, Daigoro Banjo. It allows the wielder to produce energy tendrils from any part of their body and command them at will. It is an immensely versatile power that can be used to swing around, for attacking, for mobilization, etc. The possibilities are basically limitless with this power. Smokescreen was wielded by the sixth user, N, and allows the production of smoke. That's kind of it. Float belonged to Nana Shimura, the seventh user, and again, kind of just does what the name suggests. It allows for continuous, easy levitation. The eighth user, All Might, didn't add any power to this pool as he was quirkless. The second user's quirk has not yet been revealed as of writing this video. While One for All is obviously immensely powerful and versatile, it comes with one massive downside. The human body is not made to handle multiple quirks, and so, as the power has accumulated over the generations, One for All is like a poison that saps the user's life and shortens it considerably. By the time the fourth user received it, he would not live longer than early 40s. This is a consequence of someone who already has a quirk receiving this massive power. Due to this though, Deku is seemingly exempt from this side effect, as he was quirkless and thus empty when he received the power. He did however have to work around the power's immense might in other ways, as it easily could have blown him to bits. This video is getting very long, so let's speed it up a little. Class B's Shishida wields a transformation type Beast Quirk, which allows the user to transform into a large, monstrous beast. This transformation is completely willful and can be turned on and off however one pleases. In this transformed state, Shishida's sense, physical strength, and enthusiasm are increased many fold. Kendo's transformation quirk is another very self explanatory one Big Fist. She can instantly enlarge either of her hands to about three times the size of her own body, with the additional mass being able to cause devastating damage even allowing her to weaponize wind pressure. The transformation itself also has a little bit of momentum, so she can maximize damage by timing the transformation just right, right at the time of impact. Unfortunately named powers aside, this is Kuroiro's emitter type quirk, which allows him to fuse into anything that is black or dark. This includes both things that are black normally and things covered in shadows. He can slip in and out at will and move around within them without any limitations on his physical body. If he possesses something that is mobile, he can force it to move while inside of it. He spit the glue! Ew! 
No, seriously, that's actually all he can do. He just spits glue from his weird head. That's pretty much it, yeah. If you ever feel bad about how you name your OC characters, remember that Horikoshi named this guy Manga. Manga's power is an emitter type quirk called Comic, by which he can summon comic book sound effects into the real world. These sound effects are solid objects that hold the properties of that sound effect. So if Manga says boing, the resulting object will be bouncy. The only known weakness is that his throat can get sore through overuse. I actually had to stop the recording there because my actual real life throat got sore as well, so hey, immersion. Monoma boasts one of the most interesting powers in Class B, with his emitter type quirk Copy. By touching someone, Monoma gains access to their quirk for up to 10 minutes. This copied ability is just as powerful as the original and only limited to Monoma's understanding of it. He can also copy multiple abilities at once and hold them within his body, again adhering to that 10 minute time limit for each of them. Moreover, even if the time limit runs out, the lasting effects of his quirk activation can still remain. If he altered something in his environment, for example changed the size of something, it will not just revert because he ran out of time, it will still be affected. He can however only copy the base of a quirk meaning that he can't duplicate any improvements or alterations made by the original user. This makes copying accumulation types essentially pointless. Kaibara's gyrate quirk is a transformation type that allows him to spin any part of his body at very high speeds. He mostly uses it to turn his fingers into deadly drills. The American exchange student Pony comes with a very unique power, the mutant type horn cannon quirk. This ability makes the user grow horns which they can then launch as projectiles, regrowing them fairly quickly. Additionally, the user can keep up to 4 airborne horns under telepathic control for more complex attacks and maneuvers. The horn growth will slow down however if the user's diet doesn't include enough keratin. Lizards are really cool and I wish I could give you like a full 6 hour lecture on them. But for now, Tokage boasts Lizard Tail Splitter, a transformation quirk which allows you to split her body into multiple small segments which you can control telepathically. Crucially, separated organs retain their functions, so by splitting off her eye, she can see even as a floating piece of skin. However, there is a limit to how many parts she can split herself into, and overshooting that will cause the excess segments to fall dead. She can regenerate them, but that takes time and leaves her open. Kinoko is not only best girl from class B, but she also has a pretty strong quirk. Mushroom is an emitter type power which allows the user to generate and spread fungus spores from their body. Once these spores make contact with a solid surface, they will quickly grow into full grown mushrooms. The spores can grow from any surface, including walls, floors, people, and worst of all, inside of people. They require humidity to grow efficiently. The main downside of this ability is its indiscriminate nature, so Kinoko can accidentally affect allies. To that end, she makes sure to equip them with disinfectant and ethanol, which can counteract the spores. Poltergeist is an emitter type quirk which allows the user to telepathically control any small object. The only lone limit is that the total weight of all controlled objects combined cannot exceed the average weight of a human being, so around 60 or 70 kilograms. Razor Sharp allows the user to sprout sharp knives from all over their body. That's pretty much it, they're just sharp knives of varying sizes and shapes. Our second exchange student, this time from China, is Rin, who wields the Scale Quirk, a transformation type which allows him to grow scales all over his body at will. These scales can either be used as a suit of armor or fired off as projectiles. 
Green's costume includes gauntlets that can fire these scales at crazy speeds like a Gatling gun. The Quiet Yui uses the Size Quirk, an emitter type which allows her to resize anything she touches. The only limitation is that it doesn't work on living things, and to activate it, she needs to clap her hands together. Class B Star and part-time Titan Honenuki is the wielder of the powerful Softening Quirk, which allows the user to soften any material they come into contact with, essentially turning it into quicksand. While this doesn't work on anything alive, it can be a tremendously effective trapping tool. All the softened material will, however, revert back to their regular property if Honenuki falls unconscious. It's in the name again. Ho Hori, what? I mean, uh, Tsuburaba can create sheets of solid air, either using them as shields or as walls. They can be broken, however, and their size is limited by his lung capacity. This transformation type is also one of the simplest quirks in the series Tetsu Tetsu's hardening, which allows him to harden his body. That's kind of it. The degree to which he can harden is variable and he can force himself to be entirely steel hard, which allows for both excellent offense and defense. He also boasts additional defense against fire. Sucks at long range though and its strength is dependent on how much iron he's been eating. Twin Impact is Nirengeki Shoda's emitter type quirk, and it is really cool. Basically, after hitting anything, he can then activate a delayed, much more powerful second hit at the exact same spot. The delay of this second hit can be whatever the user wants, which makes for a great way to throw off opponents mid-fight. This mutant quirk replaces the user's hair with a collection of vines, which they can control at will. These vines are thorny and immensely strong, as well as isolating towards electricity. The only downside is that they are actual plants and need sunlight and water. Awase is the holder of the Weld Quirk, an emitter type which allows the user to fuse any two objects that they are touching together on a subatomic level. This has surprising versatility, as he can weld shields onto himself as armor, weld his opponents into solid structures to restrain them, or weld his allies onto himself to carry them away. In case you hadn't yet caught on how, despite the whole biology angle, quirks can often be basically magic, let's look at brainwashing, Shinso's emitter type power. If a target verbally responds to the user while the quirk is active, they will be put under the user's control. The user can then command them to do any number of things. This control comes with a few caveats, however. While this quirk can control multiple people at the same time, it cannot be activated on multiple people at the same time. What this means is that if you want to have more than one brainwashed slave, you have to brainwash them one by one, no multi-hit combos. The orders they receive can also not be too complex, simple stuff only. Shinso also used to be unable to make them talk, but he overcame that limit with training. His voice has to be heard as a direct sound wave, so anything that digitizes it, like a micro or a megaphone, will cause the quirk to not work. And lastly, even slight physical contact can wake the targets out of their brainwashing. Shai Sasuke over here holds one of the most powerful transformation abilities in the series, a quirk named Manifest. Basically, Tamaki can manifest the properties of anything he's able to eat, as long as it is still in his digestive system. So if he eats octopus, he can grow tentacles, if he eats chicken, he can grow talons, etc. This isn't limited to food either, he can also eat minerals to grow crystalline structures for example. If he can eat it, he can be it. Fan favorite and current pain in my ass Mirio possesses a notoriously cool quirk, a transformation type called Permeation. 
Permeation allows the user to make parts of their body or the entire body intangible, allowing them to slip through matter at will. This fucks with physics in a few key ways. If the quirk is deactivated while the entire body overlaps with matter, the user will be propelled away explosively as the universe tries to fix an impossible situation. Doing this while in the ground allows for enormous bursts of speed. However, another, less pleasant aspect of this quirk is that everything passes through the body, including light, sound, and air. Thus, fighting with this quirk means fighting without your senses. The least noteworthy of the big three still packs quite a punch, as Nejire uses the wave motion quirk, an emitter power which allows her to convert her physical stamina into spiraling surges of energy. She can then launch those surges forward, and while they are quite slow, the destructive energy can be immense. This power is only limited by her physical life energy and stamina. If she runs out, she's in trouble. The actual best girl in MHA is already really powerful, so wisely, Horikoshi chose to give her a fairly weak power. She'd just be too OP otherwise. Hatsume's quirk is Zoom, a mutant-type power that allows her to zoom her vision and see up to 5 kilometers. I sure hope that one day, she'll be able to see me. Moving on from useless powers, how about a plot-breaking one? Eri's Rewind is an emitter accumulation type that allows the little girl to rewind living things to a previous state. This rewind can be as little as rewinding someone who is hurt back to health, or as terrifying as rewinding someone to before they existed. This immense power is the result of a mutation and has no basis in Eri's parents whatsoever. Its only weakness, besides being hard to control, is that it requires to be built up over time before being usable, with the horn atop the user's head indicating when it is ready to be used. And the award for most misleading quirk name goes to Ketsubutsu Totaki and his boomerang quirk, an emitter type power which can make things boomerang, but doesn't have to. Basically, this quirk allows the user to control the trajectory of anything they throw. This includes, but isn't limited to, boomerang shots. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> allows the user to harden objects besides their own body. Let's be real, you don't remember this guy. Oh god, oh fuck Horikoshi, why? Uh, <clears throat> I mean, Tatami from Ketsubutsu High boasts a telescopic quirk, a transformation type that allows the user to retract their body parts into themselves, kind of like a turtle if it were horrifyingly gross. Important to note, besides how gross it is, is that while retracting is instant, coming back out takes some time. Rounding out this school of utter weirdos is a man whose quirk is literally vibrate. This power allows the user to vibrate anything they touch, with the predominant utility of it being causing earthquakes by touching the ground. The user, Shindo, is not immune to these tremors though, and can be left immobilized by the aftershocks. However, this vibration can also be used to tear apart matter at a very low level, as is seen in his fight against muscular. Moving on to Shiketsu, Horikoshi's naming talent strikes once again, with Extendo Hair, Mora's mutant type quirk. This quirk grants him full control of the length, strength, and movement of every hair in his body, which he uses to coat himself in a massive tuft of living fur, able to both defend and attack with his cut. Kami's quirk is Glamour, which allows her to emit mist from her mouth. That mist can then produce any illusion that the user needs, being able to deceive people on both visual and auditory levels. These illusions can get quite big, enough to fill an entire room, and it has been noted that she is under strict supervision as to when and how she's allowed to use the quirk for the potential damages this can cause. Just as we thought we'd be free of body horror quirks, along comes Shishikura and his transformation quirk, Meatball. 
His ability allows him to mold and reshape human flesh. He can use it on himself to separate his limbs and control them telepathically, or he can use it on others where he can transform them into horrifying sentient meat clumps if he touches them. Keeping them like that takes active concentration though. In conclusion, that is a spicy meatball! The last active student on our list is also one of the most bombastic ones, Inasa and his emitter quirk Whirlwind. This power allows him to control the air currents around him, turning them into great winds and gales that can levitate him and others and vanquish enemies with ease. While it doesn't necessitate any movement on his part, restraining his arms and legs does seemingly weaken his control over his quirk. Moving on to the teachers, we have 13's Black Hole, an emitter quirk which manifests as the ability to create black holes in the tips of one's fingers. These black holes will attract anything within a given direction into them, disintegrating them upon contact. It is highly deadly to be used on humans, and as such, its biggest weakness is how much caution is required by the user to not do more harm than good. Blood Control allows the user to both never die from blood loss, apparently, and control their blood freely once it leaves their body. This can mean shaping it or even freezing it. Vlad, the user, has a special made costume that can emit blood from his body rapidly and at massive quantities. Cement gives the user the ability to manipulate cement based material simply by being in contact with the surface. It does however not give them the ability to create new cement, they can only reshape existing cement and concrete. This is very useful for rapidly creating and altering cement structures. Clones allows ectoplasm to vomit out a glowing slime, which will then reform into a number of clones. The maximum number can vary from day to day, but if he's in a good mood, he can make up to 36 of them. These clones have a shared consciousness and share information freely. They can also form together to make one giant clone. What the dog doing? Teaching, apparently. Dog is a quirk that makes you act like a dog. Dog hearing, dog smelling, dog barking. Dog. One of the most busted abilities in the series is held by Aizawa, master of the erasure quirk. In simple terms, this power disables someone's quirk for as long as Aizawa is looking at them. And in a world where everyone relies on their quirks, that makes him a motherfucking problem. However, as this is a very powerful ability, it comes with the usual caveats. He has to see the actual physical body of the person with little to no obstructions, and the quirk gets deactivated whenever he blinks. The quirk also causes his hair to float when it's active, so that can be used by his opponents to suss out when erasure is on and when it is off. And lastly, he can only focus on one target at a time and requires both eyes to be functional. Granny Tsunade over here is able to heal people with her quirk, heal. By kissing them, she accelerates the body's natural recovery by a tremendous amount. But the crux is acceleration, not causation. The energy required for the process still comes from the receiver's body, and thus, the healing process can leave them exhausted. If their wounds are too big, this quirk can actually just straight up kill him by exhaustion. If this power system wasn't weird enough yet for you, here's a fun one. What if a rat got a quirk? Yep, Principal Nezu is a mutated rodent who has a mutant quirk that gives him beyond human level intelligence, being able to accurately predict high level complex causations. Whether or not animals having quirks is common or not, and why exactly this is a thing, I cannot tell you, for the series doesn't either. UA's most American teacher, Snipe, comes with an equally gun-loving quirk, homing, which allows the user to lock onto any target within 600 meters of their vision. Once locked on, all projectiles released by the user will home in on their target. 
This obviously works very well with bullets, but it does have a few caveats. Homing's precision is limited to just hitting the target. It cannot pinpoint any specific part or area, so no body parts. And additionally, the homing attacks lose some of their momentum along their trajectory, lessening their impact. Power Loader is the Tenten of UA, basically never appearing, and thus his quirk, Iron Claws, is basically unseen. He has these, like, metal things at his fingertips, and they supposedly allow him to burrow into the ground. Whatever you say, Hori. Held by the thirsty teachress, Miss Joke, Outburst is another barely seen power. This quirk allows the user to force others around them to burst into laughter so intense that it incapacitates them temporarily. Speaking of thirsty, Midnight is not only UA's most nonsensical hire, she's also one with a very powerful and sneaky quirk. Somnambulist allows the user to emit a sleep-inducing gas from their skin. While it works faster on men than on women, after a few sniffs, it don't matter, your ass is going to sleep. What the fuck kind of school has its own DJ? Anyway, present Mike's quirk, simply called voice, allows him to be really loud. He can create massive sound waves with his voice, strong enough to break glass and eardrums alike. He uses a collar to direct the sound waves as to not destroy everyone around him. Additionally, he's one of the few examples we have in the series of someone being born with their quirk already active, as he apparently ruptured the eardrums of the doctor that delivered him. Kamui Woods is among the first pro heroes the series introduces, and as such, his quirk, Arbor, is one of the first impressions we get from this power system. This transformation type power allows the user to grow and control wooden tendrils from anywhere on their body. While the user can control them at an unnatural level of flexibility, they are nonetheless just as rigid and solid as real wood, making them excellent capture tools. Obviously weak to fire, though. Speaking of fire, Burnin has seen very little screen time, and so we have almost no footage of her blazing hair quirk in action. This mutant type is expressed through that mass of glowing green flame hair, which she can pull out and mold into fireballs. But again, we haven't really seen her use it. As a fan-made character turned canon, Bubble Girl is a bit of a weird case in that she barely exists. However, she did manage to show off her quirk, Bubble, which makes bubbles. They don't have any special combat properties, they can just blind enemies if they get into their eyes. Interestingly, they will always be filled by an aroma the user has smelled at least once before. Another one of those, it's in the name, situations. Ryukyu's dragon quirk allows her to transform into a massive dragon. In this form, she has all the abilities a dragon would have, minus the fire breath. She is immensely tanky and powerful and can fly, and her claws allow for both deadly strikes and inescapable grapples. The final accumulation quirk that we know of so far is Fat Absorption, held by Fat Gum. This quirk allows the user to suck anything that comes in contact with them into their body fat. Because of this, it turns the user's fat into the ultimate defense. Bullets and strikes alike don't penetrate the squish. And even if the damage should be immense, this quirk has a trump card. It can also absorb impacts and kinetic energy and store it within the fat. This energy can then be released as a single devastating counterattack. This is enormously powerful, but uses up all of the fat reserves within the user's body. And this quirk will not work without a lot of body fat, which the user has to acquire and maintain the traditional way. No one, not even this video, is safe from the denim demon himself, best genus. His quirk is called Fiber Master, and it allows him full telepathic control over all fiber within his range. What this means is that if you are wearing clothes, 
He can weaponize them against you, restraining you or using the fiber inside of them as weapons. He also regularly uses his own costume for this, as per his own account, denim is the easiest material to control. This power takes a lot of concentration and training to use though. Moving on to MHA's literal Instagram model, Hawks has a lot going for him, and his quirk, Fierce Wings, is no exception. This mutant type causes the user to grow large red wings made up of hundreds of feathers. When the wings are fully intact, they grant the user the expected ability to fly at great speeds, but that isn't really its primary strength. Hawks has full telepathic control over every single one of the feathers. He can detach them at will and have them do different tasks. As they are incredibly strong and flexible, a single feather can pierce enemies, carry allies, and save dogs. Additionally, every single feather is a sensory organ, as they can feel the vibrations in the air, making them excellent for espionage. Their only weakness is that they are very flammable, and once destroyed, take about two days to regrow. And also, if Hawks detaches or loses too many of them, he does lose the ability to fly. Edgelord's quirk is Fold the Body, the ability to manipulate the thinness of their body as well as stretch their limbs. He can use this to essentially turn himself into string or paper, great for infiltrations. In a more extreme move, he can enter someone else's body and mess them up from the inside. Foreskin, uh, I mean foresight, is the ability of Sir Nighteye and it allows him to see someone's future. This quirk comes with many many conditions, however. It can only be activated once the user has made both physical and eye contact with the target. Once those conditions are met, the quirk can only remain active for up to one hour. When seeing someone's future, he sees it from a fixed perspective, so crucial details can often be out of view. The quirk also doesn't date what exact time you are seeing, and it only carries visual information, no sound. Once that hour is over, the quirk needs 24 hours to recharge. But worst of all, as Night Eye learned in his final hours, the predictions aren't even necessarily correct. So this quirk ends up being very, very misleading in how powerful it might seem. Arguably among the first real quirks we see in the entire franchise, gigantification is sure to make a big impact. While this is actually a really common type of quirk, its most important iteration is the one used by Mount Lady, whose version allows her to grow to a massive 20 meters. However, she can only switch between a normal height and 20 meters, no in-betweens. Endeavor possesses one of the most imposing yet simple powers in the series, Hellflame, the ability to create and control fire all across his body. Be it blasts, jetpacks, javelins, fireballs, or massive body-wide beams of superheated destruction, this quirk can do it all. Its only drawback is actually the one thing it doesn't do. The quirk is linked with the skin, as that is the fire-producing organ, and as such, it is naturally resistant to fire. But the insides of the user, the organs, are not. So overusing this quirk runs the risk of raising the body temperature to a level too high to safely operate. Jet is a mutant type quirk which essentially creates an additional airway in the user's body, allowing them to not just transfer air between their lungs and head, but also their feet. Those feet are mutated to have pressurized air cannons at the bottom, allowing one's breath to be expelled with enormous force, enough to cause rapid propulsion. This can be used to fly short distances, but it is limited by the user's lung capacity. This is a word I have seen quite enough of over the last two years. Rocklock's quirk is Lockdown, and it allows him to lock anything he touches into position. This essentially freezes that object in place, unable to be moved until the quirk is released. At its most potent, it can even stop moving terrain. There is a limit to the size of the stopped object though, and it does not affect living beings. Ah, majestic. We hardly even knew ya. This quirk was, well, magic, which allowed him to create magical rings from his wrist that could transport people. Rest in peace, my guy.
Okay. MHA's most wasted character unfortunately also holds the series' most complex quirk by far, so let's go through it together. Star and Stripe was the hero bestowed with New Order, a quirk that, in simplest terms, allowed her to set rules that were absolute. These rules could change the properties of things around her, herself, the quirk itself, or her opponent. So, for example, she could say that if her opponent moves, their heart will stop. That rule would then take effect. Or, one thing that she constantly did was to impose a rule on herself that stated that she was physically almost as strong as All Might. As you can certainly see, this is maybe the most busted ability in the entire series. She could literally tell the air to shape a star and a vacuum, and so it comes with some distinct drawbacks. The basic conditions for this quirk are that only two rules can be active at the same time, and that in order to activate a rule, the user must touch and speak the name of the entity the rule shall be imposed on. This is easy enough with inanimate objects, as you just speak their name. But with living, sentient beings, it's a bit more iffy. Namely, the user and the target have to actually agree on the name, and if the target has, for example, a shattered sense of self, or struggles with multiple personalities, the ability will not work. Also, the quirk does have a power limit. While it can be used to, for example, power up the user, it cannot make them immortal. Alright, let's move on to something fun. Orcanus is a mutant quirk that turns the user into a human-killer whale hybrid. The user can live on land but enjoys many of the abilities an orca has, such as increased size and strength, great swimming speed, and even a hypersonic sound cannon capable of shattering glass and frying brains. It does make the user very susceptible to dehydration though. Pixie Bob's quirk may be called Earthflow, but if you've seen Avatar, you know the drill. She can control and shape the soil around her, from making avalanches to creating autonomous dirt monsters. Her range is pretty huge too, as she can control the entire soil of the forest her team owns. Gomu Gomu no! Wait, wrong series. Tiger's quirk Playa Body allows the user to stretch and flatten their own body at will, granting them inhuman flexibility. That's kinda it, he just do be stretching. Search is a very handy quirk which allows you to analyze and store the positions, weak points, and other important details of anyone you see while it is active. In its simplest form, it's a way to keep track of someone's location, but it can also serve as an extensive database of weaknesses. Certainly would be awful if it fell into the wrong hands. I am once again asking you to read the name. Telepath allows the user to send telepathic messages to anyone in their range. This is only one way though, they cannot hear the target's thoughts. The range on this is also pretty huge as she could reach everyone in the forest the one time she had to do it. Rabbit is a mutant type quirk which causes the user to assume rabbit-like features. Beside cosmetic features like a bunny tail and bunny ears, the user also receives enormous leg strength enough to jump dozens of meters into the air, smash through concrete, and decapitate a human. Additionally, the user also gets enhanced senses, specifically smell and hearing, as well as a more esoteric survival sense, which can suss out danger. Not all heroes wear capes, but this man certainly did. Crust wielded the shield quirk which allowed him to rapidly produce small, hexagonal plates from his body. These hexagons could combine into shields and discs of any size, which could be used defensively to block attacks as shields, or offensively as projectiles. A freaky mutant type quirk which allows the user to create water from the host spigots they have in place of hands. The water that is emitted is under full control of the user, being able to be shaped into rather complex forms, even enough to signal to civilians to just keep moving. Hey! That's why he's the GOAT! The GOAT! <laughs> Wash is one of the most important characters ever conceived in literature, and as such, he gets 
a phenomenal quirk. Clean Bubbler allows the user to produce and control soap bubbles from their body. This can either be in the form of concentrated, pressurized beams or as giant, incapacitating bubbles. They also have disinfectant qualities. Now this is a fun one. Traject allows Kido to redirect and alter the trajectory of any moving object that passes through his bandages, making him a great support for flying heroes like Endeavor, since he can just take care of those nasty turns. This is a fan-made name, the actual quirk remains unnamed, don't kill me. This quirk allowed the user to turn their upper body into sand, shaping and controlling it freely. This property also made the user immune to contact-based attacks, as it is impossible to fully touch a mass of sand. Sounds good, right? For all the good it did its user. Ah yes. Discount Aizen. All for One has, regrettably, turned out to be the main villain and as such, his quirk, All for One, is one of the most crucial powers in the series. In simplest terms, All for One is the power to steal, use, and freely distribute other quirks. This works through two holes in each of the user's hands, which on contact suck the quirk right out of the target. This process is not instant, however. So, because this video isn't long enough yet, here is a list of quirks that All For One has absorbed and can be used by the user. Search, Ragdoll's quirk. Air Cannon, which allows the user to release an air shockwave from their arms. Air Walk, which allows the user to levitate freely at the cost of their concentration. Forced Quirk Activation, which allows the user to forcefully activate someone else's quirk on contact. Heavy Payload, which increases the destructive power of every attack. Hypertrophy, which allows the user to enlarge the muscles in their arms. Impact Recoil, which sends some of the physical damage received back on the attacker. Multiplier, which allows the growth of additional arms. Radio Waves, which allows the user to emit electromagnetic waves. These waves can be used to jam enemy communications or to themselves communicate with and even control one's allies. Reflect, which copies the last attack the user got hit with and shoots it back at the attacker. Scatter, which allows the user to split up and spread out any projectile they fire off. Rivet and Rivet Stab, which allows for the growth and propagation of red metallic rivets from the user's body, respectively. Spear-like Bones, which allows for the growth of hardened cone-shaped bones from the user's body. Spring-like Limbs, which allows the user to generate and store energy by coiling their limbs like springs. Super Regeneration, which allows the body of the user to heal from any wound or injury. It cannot, however, heal injuries that have already closed up before the quirk is activated. Warping, which allows the user to teleport others either to or away from themselves by enveloping them in black ooze. Using this power causes tonsillitis. Infrared, which allows the user to perceive the world through infrared radiation, thus not relying on the eye's perception of the visible spectrum of light. This likely only represents a fraction of the quirks stored within All for One, however. Fucking with the number of quirks someone naturally has is always a mess. In All for One's case, while he seems to be naturally resistant to the adverse effects of having multiple quirks, he does imply that he has an upper limit to how many he can hold but that limit may as well be in the multiple hundreds. Meanwhile, those who lose their quirk can often become comatose, with inconsistent recovery. And those who are given new or even multiple new quirks as a gift often suffer the worst effects, from the body rejecting a new quirk like a foreign organ to straight up brain death upon holding more than one quirk. This last phenomenon is also why All for One spent so much time researching a way to bioengineer humans that are able to hold multiple quirks safely. Arguably, the most successful result of that research is Gigantomachia, a massive behemoth who is the only known subordinate of All for One whose body was resilient enough to hold multiple quirks without extensive modifications. Giganto holds seven known quirks. Endurance, his original quirk, which converts motivation and morale into physical strength and stamina. 
as long as you can motivate him, Giganto will never run out of steam. His own version of Gigantification, which allows him to grow into any size between his regular height and 20 meters. Crucially, he gets bigger the more excited he gets, and he can keep his maximum size up indefinitely thanks to the excitement interacting with his endurance quirk. His own version of Dog, which just like Hound Dogs, gives him the sensory abilities of a canine, specifically the olfactory sense. Pain Blocker, which causes him to not feel any pain, be it inside or outside his body. Energy Saver, allows him to run on a fraction of the sleep, water and food he would otherwise need, allowing him to fight for 48 hours straight. Fierce Gains, a quirk that allows him to enlarge and harden his muscles to a degree at which they are almost impenetrable. Mole, which allows Giganto to undergo a transformation whereby he grows massive claws and rocky armored plates all across his body, allowing him to burrow underground and tear through solid rock. The League's tragically forgotten magician comes with a magical quirk. Compress is the power to compress anything the user touches into a small blue marble. Anything in the area around the object is compressed alongside it, the only exception being the user's arm. The compressed marbles are light and do not retain any features of the contents. The compression can be undone at will, which causes physical expansion and momentum. This attack has enormous versatility, as it can be used to contain enemies, it can be used to sever limbs, and it can even be used to tunnel through the ground by compressing parts of the ground at once. There also seems to be no limit to how many marbles can be made. This is another fan-made name. Dobby is not only single-handedly carrying this series on his back right now, but he also sports one of the simplest and yet coolest powers in it. As Endeavor's son, he inherited a fire quirk, but his is a little different. Its potential output is massive, way beyond what Endeavor can do, being generally so hot that the flames are blue by default, a color Endeavor's flames only reach at their hottest points. This allows Dobby to emit devastating waves of infernal fire, easily turning everything and everyone to ash. The quirk's downside, however, comes from the key way in which it differs from its predecessor. While Hellflame makes the user's skin flame-resistant, Cremation does not. Because Dobby's body took after his mother, whose quirk made her very weak to heat, using Cremation burns his body as fuel, disfiguring him continuously. This is easily one of the most terrifying quirks in the entire series. Decay will, once activated by the user's touch, disintegrate anything, living or inanimate, into dust. And as if this wasn't already bad enough, at full power, the effect of the quirk can propagate through objects adjacent to the original target, decaying them without them having to be touched by the user. This can create enormously devastating domino effects that can level an entire city. The true power of Decay was locked away for much of the series, as Shigaraki's repressed trauma stopped him from using it to its full potential. But once he reawakened its true form, Decay becomes essentially unstoppable. Even its main weakness, that it only activated once all five fingers touched the object, doesn't seem to be true anymore, as it has been seen activating with only a few fingers, and on rare occasions even through his feet. And if Shigaraki were to grow more hands, for whatever reason, every single one would also be capable of activating this wave of annihilation. What's also interesting is that this quirk actually changed effects throughout Shigaraki's life. When he first activated it when he was a child, it actually turned people into bloody chunks, whereas now, at full power, it just straight up turns them into dust. Twice's quirk is Double, one of the most deceptively powerful quirks in the series. On a basic level, Double allows the user to clone anything, with a maximum of two clones active at the same time. In order to clone something or someone, the user requires accurate measurements and data about the target, and the clones are fairly fragile. The first will disappear after taking damage equivalent to a broken bone, and the second is even more fragile. So far, so balanced. The real trick to this quirk, however, is how it can undo its own weakness. The original user can only have two clones active at once, but they can clone themselves, and that clone will have their own quirk 
with their own limit. So by cloning themselves, the user can create a cascading avalanche of clones, each able to make two clones as well. Combining this with the ability to clone incredibly strong allies indefinitely, this is one of the most fearsome powers in the series. My boy Spinner! His quirk is Gecko, and it allows him to cling to walls. He doesn't need anything else, he is already perfect. Life Force is the original quirk of Dr. Garaki, and allows the user to slow down their aging by about half, thus extending their lifespan significantly. It comes at the cost of physical fitness, however. If you ever needed a reason as to why Horikoshi should rely a little less on extra material, look no further than Giran and his quirk. Yeah, this guy has a quirk, and one that would have been seriously cool to see in the series proper. Muddied grants the user the ability to cause minor amnesia to a person if they make contact with their head, making their memories of the previous 5 minutes and the next 5 minutes vague. This would be really cool if we could see like an underground deal where he's trying to rip someone off and trying to get them to forget how much they're actually paying. But alas, it is relegated to being a footnote in a data book. Pump Up is the quirk of the fittingly named villain Muscular, and it allows him to freely control the size, density and shape of his muscle fibers. At full strength, it causes his muscles to burst forth, turning him into a humanoid mass of wriggling muscle strands. At this point, his strength rivals the complete one for all. However, those strands can be destroyed individually, and if enough of them tear at the same time, the quirk becomes unusable for a short amount of time. Transform allows the user to take on the appearance and voice of any person whose blood they have consumed. The amount of blood consumed determines how long the transformation can be kept up, and if the user currently has multiple blood samples in their body, they can freely switch between transformations. Here, one cup of blood corresponds to roughly one day of transformation. Toga was even able to, in a moment of deadly desperation, awaken the quirk, which then allowed her to also use the quirks of those she transforms into, provided that she understands their power and has seen it used up close. Magnetism allows the user to magnetize anyone within a 4.5 meter radius of themselves. Men are magnetized south, and women are magnetized north, and as such, opposite sexes will attract while same sexes will repel. This can be used to move around enemies and or catapult allies at high speeds. This absolute nightmare of a quirk turns the user's teeth into sharp blades which can be extended and shaped freely, allowing them to create complex mazes of razor-sharp dental structures. They are breakable though, thank god. Warpgate is an artificial quirk created from Shirakumo's cloud quirk, and as such, also works off a similar concept. The user can emit a dark fog from their body, which can teleport anyone it envelops anywhere the user desires. The teleportation is coordinate based though, so the user needs to have a good understanding of the exact location they are targeting. Additionally, the fog can only appear around and near the user, so they can only teleport people that are near enough to them. The Gas Quirk allows the user to emit massive amounts of toxic gas which, when inhaled, will make the affected comatose until treated. The gas also works as a sensory organ, as the user can perceive any movements within it. The user can however not control the flow and movement of the gas itself once it is out, it simply swirls around the user like a typhoon. If the user gets knocked out, the gas disappears immediately. Chronostasis affects a user's hair, granting them two arrow-shaped strands that they can extend at will, but only in a straight line. These two arrows are called the minute hand and the hour hand. A target pierced by any of them will have their movement slowed, for one minute and one hour respectively. 
Confession is similar to brainwashing, as it activates when a user's verbal question is answered. In Confession's case, the target is forced to speak the truth. This makes this quirk an invaluable tool for interrogations. Its only weakness is that it is very literal. If the activating question is phrased poorly, the target can answer with a technical truth without telling the user what they actually want to know. In the series, the user, Nemoto, asks Toga and Twice if Shigaraki told them to betray the Yakuza, to which they say no, which is true. They do, however, betray them later as Shigaraki told them to do what they want, which was to betray them. Crystallize allows the user to grow hard crystals from anywhere on their body. These crystals grow almost instantly and can even be shaped into more complex shapes like swords. They are breakable, however, and financially worthless. Food is a quirk that allows the user to eat anything. They can bite, chew, and ingest any substance, from organic matter to solid concrete. Using this quirk doesn't seem to affect the stomach, as it is referred to as bottomless. However, if the eaten substance is toxic, that will affect the user in the predictable way. Larceny is a quirk that allows the user to steal any object in the target's possession. Once active, the quirk will simply cause the targeted object to fly into the user's hands. This quirk is reliant on the target being in the user's sightline though, so if they can't see the object they're trying to steal, they can't steal it. This quirk is also the only reason I know what the word larceny means. Thank you, manga! Yet another Yakuza quirk. Mimicry allows the user to possess any object the size of a fridge, and manipulate it as if it were their own body, even changing its shape somewhat. The size limit of the affected object can also be removed through the use of drugs. Its main weakness is that while inside an object, the user does not perceive the outside world, so in order to see what's going on, the user has to pop out their head occasionally, which of course leaves them open. Yakuza man Tengai holds the barrier quirk, which allows him to erect a spherical telepathic wall around him that is as sturdy as a steel wall. He can freely control the size of the barrier and its activation is instant. It can block any attack as you can imagine. Its only drawback is that it will always appear with him as the center, so it cannot shield anything that isn't close to him. The barrier also, while really strong, can still be broken with enough force, and if it does, he's in big trouble. Overhaul is another one of those completely busted quirks, as it allows the user to disassemble and reassemble matter at will. This has to be activated by the hands of the user touching the target, a finger is already enough. The control the user has over this power is immensely precise, which makes this power extremely versatile. The very ground can be reshaped into spikes, injuries can be healed, and enemies can be turned into pudding with a swipe. But most fearsome of all is this quirk's power to fuse multiple objects by disassembling and reassembling them simultaneously. This also works on people, and a fusion of two people will have access to the quirks of both. Horikoshi's twin brother is the user of the sloshed quirk, an ability which attacks the sense of balance of anyone within the user's range. The targets become dizzy and nauseous, as if they were drunk. The user can choose who it affects, and even after the quirk itself is turned off, the effects linger for a little bit. Lovable Macho Man Rapa's quirk is Strong Arm, which allows him to rotate his shoulders at high speeds, in turn enabling insanely fast punches. He can ora ora at speeds impossible for regular humans, and as such, his fists pack quite a punch. Last Yakuza quirk, Vitality Stealing, is activated through physical contact, after which the quirk allows the user to steal the target's stamina simply through inhaling. That stolen stamina doesn't just enhance the user's physical strength, but it also increases their muscle mass and overall size while tiring the enemy out.
Feel Good Inc.'s CEO sports the quirk Anthropomorph, which allows him to take any object that is roughly human-sized, a fridge for example, there's a lot of fridges in this video, and turn them into fully controllable humanoid puppets. He can choose how they look and he can control and maintain multiple at once. He does have to give them orders via sound though, no telepathy, which is why he uses Bluetooth earpieces. Hashtag not sponsored by Raycon. Getten's ice manipulation quirk allows him to freely manipulate any and all ice within his range, which is enormous, reaching up to the size of a small city. Any form of frozen water is under his command, and he can freely alter its shape, density, and after an awakening, even its temperature. That last part is also how Getten overcomes the quirk's only weakness. Ice manipulation can only control ice, not produce it. But by letting some of the ice he already controls fall into a water source, like a pipe or a lake, and then lowering its temperature dramatically, Getten can instantly freeze any water he can find, thus continuously increasing the amount of ice at his disposal and, in a way, hacking his way around his weakness. Political party leader Hanabata holds just the right quirk for the job. Insight lines the user's voice with an agitating electromagnetic pulse. If that pulse is taken in by someone who is loyal to the user, they will have their physical and mental abilities buffed, as well as feel compelled to cooperate with the user. The effectiveness of this buff depends on the volume of the user's voice. However, if the targets are overcome with an emotion stronger than their loyalty to the user, the effect can be undone. Killer Queen! Landmine is, unironically, just MHA's version of Killer Queen. The quirk allows the user to turn anything they touch into a bomb, which they can detonate at will. These detonations aren't very powerful on their own, but in groups, they can easily be deadly. Stress is the quirk of Redestro, and allows him to convert his negative emotions, like stress or anger, into physical power. That power manifests as a malleable brown mass that springs forth from his birthmark. This brown mass can alter the shape of his body, extend his limbs, and even coat him into a sort of hulking superbody, with physical strength beyond even the toughest human being. At extreme stress levels, he can even shoot out the produced power as raw black energy, causing massive destruction in its wake. The quirk causes hair loss, though. Donatello over here has arguably one of the worst quirks in the series with how specifically useless it is. Blood Curdle allows Stain to paralyze anyone whose blood comes into contact with his tongue. Sounds good, right? Well, the effectiveness of this quirk is dependent on the target's blood type. The less affected that type is, the shorter the paralysis. The types from most affected to least affected are B, AB, A, and 0. At maximum effectiveness, Blood Curdle can only paralyze someone for 8 minutes at most. Add to it the fact that blood type is not determinable in the middle of a fight unless you have a lab with you, and you can see why this quirk is pretty much doo-doo. Confusing quirk and usernames aside, Despot allows the user to puppeteer people's bodies like marionettes, having them follow their every command. The targets are still conscious and generally quite pissed off, but the quirk gives the user full control over their bodies. However, the targets can be released by hitting either them or the user hard enough. The best villain in the series holds the elasticity quirk, a power that allows him to turn anything, even air, elastic. Doing this greatly amplifies his mobility, as he can use any surface as a trampoline, both for his own transportation or to throw off his opponents. The only real downside to his power is that the elasticity effects cannot be turned off by the user, they have to dissipate slowly over time. So an enemy that can suss out what is elasting what isn't can adapt to it fairly quickly and the user can't really do much about that. Uh. 
One of the coolest things Horikoshi ever did was to introduce the power of love as an actual part of the power system. Love is a quirk that activates when the user confesses their love to the person they adore. Once active, the quirk will give the target a massive boost in physical strength, enough to keep up with a formidable percentage of One For All's power stockpile. The strength and duration of the boost is proportional to the strength of the love, but no matter what, the user can only activate this quirk once every 24 hours. Murder Mommy might have vanished from the story, but she did leave us with a seriously cool power. Rifle is a transformation type quirk that allows the user to grow a sniper rifle from their elbow. This rifle can be armed with ammunition made from the user's hair, which can have many varying properties such as curvers and hollow points. They can then be used for, well, what a sniper rifle is used for. This quirk is considered the pinnacle of ranged projectile quirks, as its versatility and enormous range of 3 kilometers far outshine any other known powers of its type. Rounding out the villains, we have what might be the most hilariously specific quirk of them all, Ending's White Line. This quirk allows the user to freely manipulate and shape the white lines painted on roads, using them as weapons or binding material. This covers all the actually relevant quirks in the series, but unfortunately, Horikoshi has a tendency to create lots of characters that by all intents and purposes don't need to exist, one-off dudes that just sorta hang out. And they have named quirks. So, to keep the title of this video accurate, but also not to die of old age, let's do a FATHER LIGHTNING ROUND! Her hair is snakes. He is a centipede. He shoots the laser from his eye. He is a plant. He can make sword from body. This dude can flex his trapezius so much it covers his head. Look at the name. He has, like, multiple arms. He has, like, multiple arms. He has multiple arms. Hmm, what could it be? Hmm, what could it be? He can charge up his muscles to make his next punch stronger. He can swell up his muscles to make all of his punches stronger. Pikachu. Control your hair. Can control leaves, but can produce them. Reliant on bush like a hippie. Shoots lasers from his face. Don't know why this guy's a cow. Masegaki Kindergarten shows off a bunch of students with named quirks, so... Assault Dust allows the user to generate and manipulate dust, shooting it out at high speeds. Electromagnetic Bullets gives the user the ability to shoot anything they are holding with an electromagnetic pulse. Hula Hoop allows the user to generate a large hoop of energy that they can throw at their opponent to attack them. King Slam gives this child a hammer. Tongue Tank causes this kid to have a gun in his mouth. Viral Cosmos allows this kid to have flowers on its head, the petals of which she can launch. Binging Ball allows Tamashiro, the only named kid here, to create small black orbs with mouths and throw them, as they munch on anything they hit. A literal Pokemon move. Koda can shoot a little bit of water from his hands. Newsman has a horn. Well, actually, he had two of them, but he amputated one so it wouldn't obscure his news screen behind him. No, I, I didn't make that up, I promise. Finally, shame is a quirk that powers up the user proportionally to how much shame they feel. And that was it. I sincerely hope this was interesting and or helpful. Uh, if you have any further questions about any of the quirks, you want more detail or you want to see how they were used specifically in the series, absolutely check out the wiki, it is a great resource and it's basically the backbone of this video. In conclusion, why the fuck did I do this? Hey folks, thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate all the support you give me. If you like this video, remember to like, or to comment, or to maybe even give a super thanks, since that's a thing now. Um, and obviously subscribing always helps. And also, I have a Patreon, and at this point, thank you to all of our patrons. Without them, these videos would actually not be possible. A very, very special thank you to a couple of very special patrons, including Fictionape, Sini, Alex, Dakota Ferrier, Geo, Jameson Tate, Jonathan F., Ludenther, Mr. Meander, Paracha, Peros Coco, Project Iceman, and That's Just Ash. Thank you again so much, 
and I kind of want to try and do bigger videos from now on, but we'll see. See you around, be safe, and wash your hands. Bye-bye.